proud of the young man. Um, a couple things when it goes to that, I'd really like to thank the players uh, that uh, were the hosts for the young man, and uh, that's a big part of this whole process as you go through it, and also uh, Thomas Hammock and, and Ben Strickland did an amazing job through the transition of initially just uh, calming the waters, if you will, for all the commits. Um, they had all been on campus and uh, allowed us the opportunity to come in as a coaching staff and you know, build the relationships and, and start the recruiting process really over only from the standpoint of who we are as coaches. Uh, these young men were very well informed of, for the most part, of what the University of Wisconsin gave them in a world-class education, the tremendous facilities, and the tradition of football. So it was uh, not a simple process, but it was a really a one-part process to just let them understand who we are as a coaching staff and what our expectations are, and then really work into the homes to gain the trust of the, the families of the young men, and then ultimately the young men saying that uh, he wanted to uh, reconfirm his commitment. Uh, we were able to reach out to four other young men and have them on campus and uh, have them be part of the program, which is uh, a great thing. And I think the coaches all did a tremendous job. It was a team effort. The areas are scattered. It's very unconventional recruiting. Uh, when you take over a job in the, in the time frame that the, we did to solidify a class, and uh, I'm proud of the staff, proud of the young men in the program for helping us with the recruiting process. And lastly, uh, you know, thanks to everybody in the administration for allowing us to be able to get coaches here in a timely manner. Uh, you know, there's so many people out there to, to thank when it comes from an administrative standpoint to allow us to be able to, you know, get out on the road, have a recruiting weekend that's success. Uh, you know, the secretaries, I can go on and on, but just, uh, you know, a great thanks to, to all them. Uh, for uh, allowing us to be able to, to do our jobs ultimately, and it takes a lot of, a lot of hard work to make that happen. Um, as far as the class goes, you know, it was important to be able to identify uh, the needs, if you will. Uh, we were able to see the Rose Bowl practices. We were able to sit down and watch every one of the commits as a, as a staff uh, when we were at the Rose Bowl practices and locked ourselves in the room and really evaluated the young men that were already committed and then looked at the uh, practices, and then we were able to build a sheet of um, – our needs list. And when I say needs list, it's what's the most important factor is, is next year's team. That's always the most important uh, part of this process, but also to enable us to ensure quality football players uh, for the future through all four classes. And I think that we are, for the most part, we were able to do that. I'm not completely done yet. There's still a couple possibilities out there for young men to join the program as we move forward, but uh, we will not take anybody that we don't see as a, as a difference maker in our program at this point, so we'll be patient. When that happens, it happens, uh, and we'll, uh, we'll keep recruiting every single day, not just for 214, or 2014, excuse me, but uh, to finish off the 2013 class and, and move forward. So exciting time for all of us. Uh, uh, Excited to uh, move on to these workouts and get the spring ball, which is coming our way soon. But right now, we can talk about these young men. I'll take any questions that you have. Again, we have microphones on each side of the room. Just raise your hand. <coughs> Jeff. Gary, <clears throat> Gary, you've said a couple times in, in various interviews today that three years for you is the appropriate time to judge whether a class is successful. And I'm curious why that time frame, and, and how will you determine whether a class is successful in your eyes? Well, um, a successful class is, a, is a, a great football program. And you know the expectations is uh, to be great at the University of Wisconsin. And uh, that's, a, that's a simple statement. But uh, you know, I mean, you're going to hear me say this a lot in the next year. And this team, the way they work, the way they prepare, they, they want to be great. And we're going to use that term a lot. You're going to see it on t-shirts. You'll probably see it on some wristbands. But it's going to simply say, be great. And that will be the expectations of this crew in, in three years is to be great. Um, as far as why the time frame of, of three years, it's uh, really, to me, it, it comes from a lot of different reasons. So much is put into signing day. And on signing day, uh, I really like to have an opportunity to deflect the signing day and, and spend some time talking about the kids in the program because they're the core. And uh, there's so much made over signing day that, you know, uh, there's some terrific young men. These young men deserve their day in the sun, and it's important for them to be in the spotlight for, for a day, and I get all that stuff, but uh, the signing day and everything that comes around, it's built around who's got this star, who's got that star. Uh, when we develop, when we look at a young man and we spend time evaluating him, um, 
it's a it's a special opportunity when we offer a scholarship to a young man at the University of Wisconsin. It means he's a fit. It doesn't just mean he's a great athlete. It means he wants to succeed at a high academic standard. It means he wants to uh, be in the community of Madison and represent himself the way that the student athletes are supposed to do it at the University of Wisconsin. And it comes with a lot of obligations. And so, uh, you know, stars are not everything to us. It's a, it's a fit. We want a toughness factor. Uh, somebody who wants to succeed academically, socially, and athletically, and uh, that's that's where we go with it. So, uh, you know, people want to sit back and rank this and do this and do that on on, son, on signing day. We don't get into that. If we offer them a scholarship, it's because uh, we believe that they'll be a quality student athlete at the University of Wisconsin. Jesse, Gary, what what led you to pursue Tanner McAvoy, with, given such a crowded quarterback room and? and what do you hope he can bring to this program at that okay. position? Yeah, there's a uh, you know there's a lot to that. When we sit back and we look at the quarterback position and and where it sits, there's there's some very good quarterbacks in this program without question. There's also uh, an injury factor that's taking place within the, the quarterback position, which uh, we all know about, and uh, we want to make sure we're going to solidify the numbers and give us the best opportunity to play at a high level each and every week uh, during the season. Uh, that was the reason we started looking for a quarterback. Um, overall, we wanted to find one if it was the right fit. We want to create as much competition as we can at every position. And I believe that we've done that with uh, having Tyner sign a, a letter of intent with us. He's got three years left. Uh, another thing I like about Tanner is he's he's kind of had to fight his way back. He has a little bit of a chip on his shoulder. He's got a lot of want to in him. He has high expectations of himself. His family has high expectations of himself as he moves through the rest of his career. Uh, from an athletic standpoint, uh, Tanner can hurt you with his arm, his legs, and his mind. How, how good he is at that at this level remains to be seen. Um, but there's a lot of quarterbacks in this program that are excited about having the opportunity to compete for that starting job, and he's just one of them that will have an opportunity to compete. Uh, obviously, Tanner was one of the four players added that you're talking about. Mm -hmm. um, who were the others? Why were they identified and added? Well, Donnell uh, Vercher was a, a safety. Uh, we felt like we, we needed again to um, put ourselves in a position to up the numbers there. And he's a tremendous, tremendous athlete. Um, he led the junior colleges in interceptions, if I'm not mistaken. Um, you know, he moves around very well. He's a, he's a tough-minded kid, a good tackler. Academics is very important to him. Uh, so it's, uh, we, we wanted safety, and we wanted to try to find some experience at the safety spot. Um, let me look at this list here, make sure I get them all. Jakari Washington was another one. Coach Bush found Jakari just through the recruiting process. Uh, we wanted to uh, evaluate the corners uh, and get a young corner in here, another one. You know, Sojourn's here, Keylon's here. I've done a tremendous job thus far in the program uh, in the signing class for two young corners. Wanted to get another one in Jakari, and uh, he's, uh, he's very fast, he's very quick. Uh, another tough-minded young man that academics is very important for him, and he has a great story behind him, which many of these young men do, and we're excited to give him the opportunity to be part of the University of Wisconsin as far as uh, being in the football program and get the quality education. And I have one more I'm missing there. Who is it? Uh, Leon. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Linebacker Leon. Uh, Coach Aranda found Leon. Uh, great story. Really plays. Only played two years of football. Uh, tremendous, tremendous basketball player all through the AAU programs and going through high school. Uh, picked up football a couple years ago and is a tremendous athlete. Uh, again, academics for him. It was one of those University of Wisconsin. His father is very, very influential in his life as far as what he expects out of his uh, children uh, academically. Uh, he got on the, the website and did his homework, and in about a 12-hour period, it was a slam dunk, you know, uh, because of the academics at the University of Wisconsin and the world-class education that it provides that Leon was going to join our program. And uh, he will be, uh, he's a very versatile athlete. He may be an inside linebacker. He may be an outside linebacker. He may be a safety. We'll see um, as he grows and develops. But his days, best days are definitely ahead of him, as, and he's in just at the, uh, the beginning of his football career. JP. Hey, Coach, can you talk about uh, a little more about Ben Strickland and just how crucial he was in terms of all the, especially the in-state recruits and making them still want to stay in-state and play here? Yeah, um, absolutely. You know, Ben, uh, a couple things about Ben. First of all, he he reminds me of, of when I first had an opportunity to get involved in, in the state of Utah recruiting, and it's it's a special situation to be able to uh, coach at the uh, the school where you played. And he takes tremendous pride in that. 
Uh, he takes tremendous pride in this state and his ability to be able to understand and know everyone at such a young age is impressive. The other thing that I would say that Ben's done a tremendous job of, and I know this because I had to do the state of Utah for so many years, it's, it's easy to just be the yes man in the state. And it's easy to just say, you know, yes, 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 and, uh, you know, we'll take this guy and that guy. Ben has done a tremendous job of saying yes when it's yes and saying, you know, maybe we'll see when it's maybe we'll see, and then say, Coach, you know what? It's just not the fit for us right now. And because of that, he has tremendous relationships with the high school coaches throughout the state. And as easy as that statement is for me to sit here and make, that's a very, very difficult thing to do in the coaching world. And Ben has done an unbelievable job with that as I traveled through the state, um, really all over through the Midwest with him in a car for about five days straight. Uh, we got to know each other very well, probably sometimes too well um, through that process. But he. Uh, uh, he, he just continues to, to show me that the, he's a superstar in this profession at a very, very young age. Tom? Gary, you've talked about using junior college players to help with specific, or immediate needs. Um, how hard is it to get a junior college player in here, and um, are there pluses and minuses to go on that route? Yeah, you know, a, a lot's talked about. Uh, it seems to be being more and more talked about how hard it is at the University of Wisconsin to get into school. Well, it's a privilege to, to be in a school where it's that tough to get in. And for junior college kids, if, if they take care of their business, uh, they have a, a high academic standards as far as uh, the way they're carrying themselves to, to go through the junior colleges, they'll be able to get in without a problem. And we can identify those young men. It, it, we're never going to wholesale junior college kids. We're not going to go out and sign, you know, 12 junior college players. That's never going to happen. Happen. But uh, again, uh, junior college players, a lot of times, um, I was a junior college player myself, uh, there's a chip on their shoulder because they didn't receive that opportunity for whatever reason presented itself at some point in their lives to not be at a Division One program. And there's a lot of those scenarios. Well, I like that chip on kids' shoulders. And if you look back at the history of the University of Wisconsin, that's how this program was built, with tough kids that have a little bit of a chip on their shoulder that want to have a little bit of a, I told you, show, told you so, or I'm going to show you, uh, as they've gone through their career and they, they tend to blossom when they get into this environment. So the junior colleges are important. Uh, we all have a past on this staff as far as recruiting junior college players and we'll uh, do our best to pick the right ones. It's never an exact science in high school or junior college, but if we see a young man that believe can, can believe that can help us play, uh, we'll definitely look into that and, and take him. Rob? After uh, Coach, after signing day, most of these kids usually don't show up on a depth chart for three or four years later. But given that some of these kids are junior college kids coming in and maybe some of the needs on your depth chart, it, might there be more of a chance for impact for some of these kids faster on your roster? Yeah, yeah I would hope so. With the junior college kids, that's really the point, is to bring them in. And uh, my philosophy on that is once we get through these uh, conditioning times and we get through spring ball and we get into fall practice, if the junior college kids are here, they deserve the opportunity to show us who they are very early. So you're going to see those young men in practice right away. And um, you know, I explain that to the young men that when we recruit them, and I also explain it to the team, understanding that we kind of know what we have with the crew that's here. And if it's a junior college kid, we need to give him an opportunity to come in and compete. And you know, uh, one of the, the coaches or probably the coach that does it the best is Coach Schneider. And I know that's his philosophy. He hasn't told me that personally because I've never got to him. Uh, I'd love to, but I haven't been able to do that. But I know uh, how they do it as far as the expectation levels of getting the young men ready through summer uh, and putting them out on the football field early in camp to show what they can do and if they can handle it mentally and physically. And so they'll be given that opportunity early. Uh, but I also say this, so will the freshmen uh, as much as we can get them in there and see if they can handle it. Uh, a lot of them probably be handle it physically, but it's the fact of the matter is, is can you handle big time Division One football from a mentality standpoint, day in and day out, going to school, traveling, everything that comes with that. And I expect a junior college kid to be able to handle that. It's the big question is, is can high school kids, it takes a special high school kid to be able to handle that. Gary, can you touch briefly on the, the in-state kids that make up this recruiting class for you guys? Yep, six young men. Um, I'll start with those kids first. Alec James. Um, Alec is, uh, was a really a, a, a treat as we went through the uh, process of recruiting. It was tough to get him to say two words uh, initially, and uh, he's not a big talker, but Alec, uh, he's going to sit down and, 
and Alec will look you in the eye and, and really study you. And he wants to know exactly what's going on. And he made the decision very well. He has a tremendous support staff and his mom and his, his grandfather and his grandmother. Uh, the coaches at the high school have done a tremendous job of, of being involved with Alec. It was a big process for him and a whole bunch of schools. But, you know, he stayed true with us and uh, uh, hung in there and, and did a nice job. But he's a, he's a very talented young man. He's as big as he is and as tall as he is, as physical as he is, and the way he runs is very, very impressive. You know, he's going to be on that track team this year, and he'll probably run the 400 and uh, or the 4 by one and the, the 100 or whatever all that stuff is in track. And he's a very, he's a very talented young man. Um, Hayden, uh, Beagle Hayden was initially a possibility of, of the timing of, of getting him in the program. And um, when I went into the home, uh, you know, I, I looked at him and I was like, holy cow. I mean, that is a good looking young man. And... Uh, you know, I, I go back to the days with his dad when his dad was uh, at BYU and there was a little bit of a relationship back there in the past and uh, we're very happy to have him, another one of the uh, expected to be great offensive linemen at the University of Wisconsin. I feel very good about him and uh, the direction that he's headed, the way he's changed his body really over the last year is very impressive. Um, Matt Hubley, uh, tough, gritty. Uh, does it all, you know, runs the ball, he's physical, he uh, can tackle you, uh, project him as a safety down the road. Uh, his football mind is very, very impressive. You know, I think that when I walked into the home I, and Ben was with me in that home visit too, I looked at Ben and I said, Ben, you're recruiting yourself here, you know. But Ben wishes he was that good in high school. Ben thinks he's got, he's got the plaque and everything at the high school, but he wasn't that good, he couldn't have been. Um, but Matt's a tremendous, tremendous player and um, excited about what he brings to the table. And you look at him and you say, is that a young man that could initially help you uh, right out of the gate with special teams maybe we'll see it'll be interesting to see how how he handles it because I know uh, mentally how tough he is uh, the way he carries himself uh, Chikwe uh, Chikwe, another very talented defensive end, and it's great to have Alec and Chikwe in that spot to be able to build as two freshman defensive ends. And the good thing about both those young men, speaking with Alec and of Chikwe in the same in the in the same note, is they're both athletic enough to be able to get involved into the zone blitz scheme. When we do get into the odd front versus the even front, they're that defensive end that can play with his hand on the ground if need be. He can also get back and drop out in coverage. Both of them can drop out in coverage, and and they're both very, very smart young men, so they can handle uh, the mental part of the game, and they're going to blossom and grow physically as they, they get into the uh, conditioning program as we move forward. Uh, Jazz, PV, um, very good at catching contested footballs. And when I say that, the sign of a quality receiver is sooner or later you're going to be covered and you're going to have to catch up, catch a ball that's up in the air and it's, uh, you know, it's like a rebound in basketball. Uh, he does a tremendous job of going up and getting those balls. He made some big plays. They used him a lot on some fly sweeps and things if you watch his tape. And I thought he did a very nice job of uh, putting himself in a position to, to make big plays, whether the ball was up in the air and contested or if it was out in the open field. And so, you know, he's a big, he's a big receiver. Um, but also has, has very good speed. Uh, and then TJ. Uh, TJ tells me and, uh, that he wants to be the, the best Watt boy. So if that's the case, we're in a pretty good spot. So he's uh, another tre tremendous young man, tremendous family, very, very competitive family, which you guys all know, and uh, excited about having him in the program. And he, he reminds me a lot of uh, Paul Kruger, the defensive end for the Ravens. Uh, Paul was a, a quarterback in high school when I recruited him and uh, watched him grow and develop. And, and I think that, uh, you know, as you look at TJ, what he is going to grow into is a big question. You know, my defensive mind looks over and says, boy, that's a defensive end. And, you know, the tight end guy is looking and saying he's a tight end and, and the way he's going to develop, we'll see how what happens with him. But right now he's scheduled to be a tight end and catch balls for us and can continue the tradition of great tight ends at the University of Wisconsin. Jeff, Gary, in, in, talk, in talking about signing junior college players, you've talked about them having different stories, kids developing at different rates. In your experience, have you, have you encountered a negative perception in some corners that they might be a riskier signee than a kid who – comes right out of high school, and, and how have you handled that? Yeah, I, th I think that's definitely out there. And again, w w when you go to get into the recruiting process, whether it's high school or whether it's uh, junior college, it's important to get to understand the kid. And when we go into a, a junior college or if we go into a high school, we don't just go in and sit down and talk to a player. We don't just go and sit down and talk to a coach. We want to reach out to a counselor. Uh, we want to see the environment that he lives in. We want to reach out to the people that are important in his life and then also reach out to some other people. It's a, it's a really, it's an interview process and an educational uh, 
situation for us. He he may be at a junior college where he didn't grow up. It may be across the country from where he grew, where he grew up. Who knows? But um, I think that you know a lot of times that's out there. I don't think it's deserved. Um, you know, there's there's again there's so many reasons why young men get into the junior college situations. We educate ourselves on the junior college young men just like we do on the high school kids. Um, again, far from an exact science. Tell my coaches all the time: if you're if you're two for three in recruiting, you're a great recruiter. If you're one for three, you're probably gonna end up getting fired one day. So that's basically where it is. And um, but uh, junior college is really no different. But uh, I think it's important for us to make sure that the junior college coaches know that we will recruit them um, if they're the right fit for the University of Wisconsin. John. Coach, when you look at this class, will you look at it as your first recruiting class at Wisconsin, or was too much done before you got here to leave a valuable? thumbprint um, it will never be mine it'll always be ours um, first of all uh, you know I'm just a small part of this process but uh, I think it is it is our recruiting class so there was a lot of work done before we got here and I think it was quality work it was uh, you know Brett and his staff definitely did a nice job of identifying young men and and put them in a position to be uh, very understanding of what the University of Wisconsin is uh, I don't think it can go without stating that the weekend that most of these young men especially from in-state came in uh, after the transition had taken place, prior to me getting hired, Coach Alvarez had a weekend, and it was uh, a very powerful weekend. I can't tell you how many times I've heard the stories of uh, being at Coach Alvarez's house, and during that recruiting weekend, that was a big part of it. So, uh, you know, it's 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 our recruiting class. Uh, everybody that uh, had a piece in it is involved, and uh, but I think it is it is you know, it's the 2013 recruiting class, and and we all had part to, a big part of it. Coach, at the beginning you mentioned the Rose Bowl practices and how important that was. Can you just elaborate on, on how that influenced you? Is it as simple as, wow, we really do need this position or that position? Yeah, uh, you know, as we've gone through those practices and thought back on them, it's it's uh, it's a little bit tough to evaluate a team after 14 or 13 games. I guess it was at that point. Uh, you know, the, <laughs> they're tired. Uh, you got to be careful how you practice them. But I, I did see this. The kids practiced hard. They were all business when they were out there. Uh, I thought the, the 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 work that was done was a great time for us to be able to evaluate. But it did give us an opportunity to sit back and and just see the young men in the program and, and kind of. You know, uh, size them up, I guess, if you will, um, uh, and that that was that was a big part of it. But uh, more than anything, it was just great to see how much they like to be around each other and uh, how excited they were to uh, be in the Rose Bowl and, and still be around each other. You know, some some teams after uh, you know 13 weeks, uh, and really it's about 18 weeks by the time you get through that, can't wait to get away from each other. But not that team; they wanted to still play and probably would still like to be playing if they had that opportunity. So we gained a lot from it, but uh, we've, we've gained a lot more in the the five or six morning workouts that we've had with the kids and, and being involved with them in the weight room than we did in the in the uh, Rose Bowl. Tom. Gary, as you look at your team right now, do you think wide receiver is the, still the area of greatest need and can Wheelwright help right away, do you think? You know, it, it, I, I don't know. I, I hate to single out a young man and say he's going to come in and help right away. Um, he'll be given that opportunity, and we'll see how he handles that. It, it's a need for really a couple reasons. Um, you know, we need to up the numbers there. We're low in those numbers. We, uh, it, 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 it appears to be a lot by uh, number of bodies in that position as far as where we're going, but we do need to put ourselves in a position to, to have more productivity. Uh, that's not something that we're going to turn around and hide from. Uh, we all want Jared to be a tremendous football player. He's going to be a lot better football player if when you sit back and, and you scheme our offense, you don't have to just look at him and do everything you can to try to take him away. So we want to be able to have a couple other young men that can uh, affect the game in a positive way. The kids in this program are working very hard at that, and um, you know I'm proud of the way that they're they're moving through this process, and they expect them to be the next receivers that come in there and, and be the dominant guys and and play at a uh, high level in the in the Big Ten, and I expect that too. So the the young receivers will have a chance uh, with Robert and with Jazz also, uh, but the young men in the program are going to have to you know get it done in the spring to see exactly where we sit. Gary, could you tell us more about uh, your running back, Corey Clement, out of New Jersey? And secondly, how important is it to have some connections out there on the East Coast? As you know, Barry Alvarez had a lot of success with yep. the staff and recruiting out there. Absolutely. Um, first of all, we will reach out even more uh, under the East Coast. And, and Thomas has done a, Thomas Hammock has done a very nice job. He has great relationships out there. And uh, he'll continue in that area. And we'll branch out with the staff a little bit more uh, into that area to make sure we're, we're doing uh, a great job as far as uh, 
bringing young men to University of Wisconsin from that area. Uh, secondly, Corey is uh, a tremendous young man. Uh, he's, uh, he's very gifted. He's, he's fast. He's quick. Uh, he catches the ball well. Uh, he can block. Uh, he plays. You know, when, when I recruit a young man, I always make sure I watch a whole game. I don't. I watch the highlight tapes, and that's a big part of it. It is, but I want to see how he is in the first quarter, and I want to see how he is in the fourth quarter. And uh, one of the the best things I can say about Corey as a running back is, uh, in the first first quarter, he's good. In the fourth quarter, he has uh, the ability to kind of really take over, and that's because of his toughness. and And his family background is is unbelievably impressive. The time frame. Uh, that I had to be in the home and be around his family. He has a tremendous support group, and uh, he was locked and loaded on Wisconsin now. There was no, uh, that, that kid did not waver, and he had a lot of people coming and banging down his door, and he did not waver at all. And, you know, I, I asked Thomas probably a thousand times in the last three weeks, is he okay? Is he okay? And Thomas was like, I got it, coach. He's good. So, um, and he was. So Thomas did a tremendous job there, and, and Corey and his family are, are great people. Coach, some fans or even players on the roster might look at you bringing in a junior college uh, quarterback and say, oh, he wants to bring in somebody that's his guy. Mm -hmm. Is that something that you have or you will address to the, the current quarterbacks in your roster? And what do you tell them about what's to happen next? Well, you know, uh, you know Kurt, Kurt and I had this uh, discussion a little bit, not, not down those terms, but, you know, he came in and after he, uh, we were just talking about uh, the situation where he is and, and he feels healthy, he feels great. And so, you know, I, I basically brought it up in the scenario of, of where we're sitting. And um, I have a meeting next week with every young man on the team. Uh, we'll sit down and, and have an individual meeting. And if they have those concerns, uh, we can sit down and talk about them. Um, but uh, there is, they're, they're all my guys. And, you know, when I talk about it, I, I said one of the first things I said in my interview, every one of these kids are my kids. And there's only 22 starters, but that doesn't matter to me. I'm much more worried about how they're uh, carrying themselves and succeeding off the field than really when they are on the field. But uh, we just wanted to create competition. Uh, he brings an added dimension to the quarterback position that, uh, you know, that, that with his ability to be able to run that is a positive. Does that mean he's a starting quarterback? No. The best guy will be, you know, whoever performs and leads the team the best way. So that's, uh, that's where that sits. And it's the same with the offensive line, the running backs, the tight ends, the DBs, the D-line, linebackers, and so on and so forth. So, uh, you know, may the best man play. Point. How would you compare Utah high school football to Wisconsin high school football? Um, well, the first thing I would say is there's a lot more schools in Wisconsin, which I was unaware of when I made the statement earlier I was going to call every high school a coach, and I will, but that hasn't happened yet, 400-plus high schools. Um, I would say this, uh, very very similar, um, the, the, uh, the care factor, the belief, um, in the kids as a whole, really from ninth grade all the way through is impressive. And when I say that, the coaches are involved in the kids' lives for the most part. And, and it's easy to just say they're the football coaches and they're out there and they play really good football, which they do. I mean, both states play very good football. Um, it means a lot to the state. But past that, I would say this, in the state of Wisconsin, I just see a little bit of an extra care factor for getting the young men prepared for the next level, especially academically. And um, to get to the University of Wisconsin and have the ability to go to school at the University of Wisconsin, you have to prepare from the time you're in ninth grade and you, you, know, you, you, you got to get good grades and you can't really have a bunch of ups and downs. And that's how the counselors, that's how the assistant coaches, that's how the schools are set up is to prepare the young men to succeed at a high level academically. And that's rare. I'm just telling you, that's rare for the coaches to, to have that care factor uh, and that and then put the quality on the field that they have. Uh, I had a chance to go to the uh, association's uh, 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 banquet at, at Lambeau. And you, know, you want to talk about first class. I've been to many of those uh, from many different states over the years. And, but those kids, that was, their day, that was their day in the sun there now. It was a special opportunity for them to, to be their first class, first class banquet for those young men. So there's a lot of care factor with these coaches, and I can't wait to get to know more of them. We've got time for two more. We'll go Phil and then Tom. Phil? Uh, Coach, I believe you have two early enrollees, Keelan Brookins and Sojourn Shelton. Uh, can you talk about those two players and the potential advantage they have by enrolling early? Yeah, it, it is a big advantage, no question, for both those young men. They're, uh, you know, 
high school kids adjusting very well, have a smile on their face. Uh, I try to make sure I see them every single day and uh, make sure the assistant coaches are around them as much as possible because it's very different when you're just the two new guys versus the 17 or 18 new guys uh, that walk in together. And so doing well, uh, it's definitely a big advantage. Uh, Keelan is still uh, rehabbing through his knee. Uh, he's not full speed and, and will still be somewhat limited in spring, although he you know, he'll want to go. Uh, we'll just bef definitely uh, stay off on that a little bit and let him continue to, to rehab and get better before we turn him loose. Sojourn uh, has gained eight pounds since he's been here. Uh, he tells me every day that you know he always carries around food with him too, so we're trying to get the weight on him. And uh, he's done a nice job adjusting to school very well, but it is a big advantage. Really, as, as much football as being a college student, you know, going to classes, having the, the study halls, the mentors, the tutors, all the situations that they're in, they've lived that for a semester, and that's a, that's a tremendous advantage come fall. Tom? Gary, what would you learn from talking to Henry Mason about the historically productive recruiting areas for Wisconsin? Uh, a lot. You know, I, I reached out really to, to uh, Coach Alvarez early in this process, and uh, he gave me his thoughts and, and his mindset on, on what's been effective and why areas have been effective. And one of the first things out of Coach Alvarez's mouth was to uh, talk to Henry. And uh, I was able to sit down with Henry with, along with uh, uh, Vince Ginta uh, a couple days, well, it was about two or three days ago, and just let him build the perfect scenario, the perfect recruiting uh, map, if you will, for the University of Wisconsin from his knowledge. And uh, I put a lot of value into that. And Henry has been unbelievable uh, for us as a staff. And he's a, he's a very, very uh, valuable, valuable piece uh, of, this, of this staff as, as we move forward in a lot of areas, not just in recruiting. But uh, his knowledge at the University of Wisconsin is, is uh, important to me. I promise you that much.